After quoting Charles Dickens' opening of A Tale of Two Cities, when tabling the medium-term budget policy statement in his maiden speech to Parliament, Minister Tito Mboweni described our nation as one that can either go directly to heaven or go the other way. He argued that under President Cyril Ramaphosa, our country has chosen the difficult path of redemption. Oh, how desperately ye must want redemption from the sins of the ANC, the collective evil that taints them all. As the desperate pleas for redemption ring hollow six months before the elections, tragically, there is no redemption for, from the hell that your sins have subjected our people to. There can be no redemption when the same sinners still preside over looted municipalities, provinces, state entities, and government departments. Forget redemption as Satu remains untouchable through sex for job scandals, 5,000 teachers not qualified to teach, and the loss of the highest number of teaching days lost to strikes in the continent. There is no redemption while 60% of our TVET colleges remain dysfunctional and university students wait entire semesters for basic allowances, the absence of which will set them up for failure. Redemption will evade you in superficial summits that only repackage old investment pledges through the mist of policy uncertainty, whilst 278,000 more South Africans, 117,000 of whom are youth, are added to the ranks of the unemployed since your supposed savior, President Ramaphosa, was anointed. No, this president is as damned as the last. As a nation, we must choose not to die for your sins. After centuries of colonial and apartheid oppression, we had a dream that one day, whatever our race, background, or religion, we would be able to stand together as one, living free, happy, and dignified lives. The ANC abandoned that dream at the altar of self-enrichment, failing to redress the legacies of our past that keep us apart. And so we remain a deeply divided nation. There are those on the inside, people with jobs, education, opportunities. And there are those on the outside, millions of South Africans who live in poverty and who have no hope of finding employment. This must change. Under a DA government, we will bridge this divide. We will focus all our efforts on bringing the outsiders into the economy by supporting enterprise, attracting real investment, and helping businesses, Honourable large Sina. and small, to create jobs. We will Honourable unite Sina. South Africans. Honorable Kasim, please take your seat. Yes, Honorable Deputy Minister. Can the member take a question? Are you prepared to take a question, Honorable Kasim? No, I'm not prepared to do so. Uh, Thank you. Take Kasim. your seat. We will unite South Africans, building one South Africa for all around this goal instead of dividing, blaming, and creating enemies. One way we will do so is through, cre through creating fair access to real and long-term jobs. We have a plan, and this includes, for example, introducing a voluntary national service, one year of income and skills development for school leavers, creating job centers throughout our, our land that provides information, advice, and free internet to job seekers growing small business opportunities through increased funding assistance and removing blockage and red tape, prosecuting and eliminating the practice of sex for jobs and carpet interviews, and pro prosecuting and eliminating the practice of cash for jobs and corruption in allocating jobs. We can choose a better path, one will, that will educate and skill our people and our youth and create fair access to, lo to real long-term jobs. If we reward ANC failure with our votes, we will all be damned. As a nation, we can find salvation, but we can only do so at the ballot box. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 